what's up guys this is nick here from everything tech and welcome to this review of the samsung galaxy tab a 9.7 now i left a timestamp down below in the description so you guys can go ahead and customize your viewing experience to go to the sections that you would like just in case you don't have enough time to stick around for this review so kicking things off let's get into the hardware tour of the samsung galaxy tab a 9.7 and i know this tablet was released back in may of 2015 but i just got my hands around to it so stick around anyway going up to the top we're going to see the samsung logo we're going to see a ambient light sensor right here and a two megapixel front facing camera going down to the bottom you're going to see we have a home button here a back button here and a multitasking switch key now these do not light up just so you guys are aware this is a 9.7 inch TFT panel that comes in at 1024 by 768. For all the PPI people out there, that is 132 pixels per inch. So not the sharpest resolution in the world. It's actually the same exact resolution as the iPad 2 and the iPad original. Going down to the bottom, you're going to see dual speakers right here. And yes, they both fire out. It's not just one speaker and one for show. Here is a micro USB port right here. And here is a 3.5 millimeter headset jack. Going off to the right side of the tablets facing you is going to be the power button right here. A little mic right here in case you're doing anything audio. Right here is going to be your volume down, volume up. And then down here we have a micro SD card slot that supports an extra 128 gigabytes. So that is a nice addition right there. Going off to the back, you're going to see your five megapixel primary autofocus camera, Samsung logo right here. And then these two little circles right here, you might be wondering what are those? Those are for extra cases that you can get in accessories like the book cover or other Samsung cases that come with this. So it is a proprietary feature. So you have to buy Samsung things. Going over to this left side is going to be nothing all the way across. And if you guys were wondering, this tablet is 7.5 millimeters thin, so about as thin as the iPad Air. I think the iPad Air is about 7.2 millimeters. But as you've seen in the intro, the tablet is as thin as a pen. It actually might be a little bit thinner than a pen. So as you can see, if I bring this pen here, put the pen right there, you can see this tablet is very, very thin. So there you go on that aspect. Um, also, I want to mention this tablet weighs only 450 grams. The LTE model weighs 453 grams. And uh, that basically means that you can hold this tablet really easy in one hand. And it's very, very light for you guys. So yeah, it's under one pound actually. So if you wanted like a budget style iPad Air that runs Android, this is what basically that feels like. So yeah, how is the build? It feels very sturdy, typical Samsung plastic with, you know, solid feeling plastic, you know. Everything feels solid on the tablet, no creaks and pops on this thing. Going over to the back, you see it nice and solid. Internals are nicely wrapped. There's no seams breaking off anywhere around the tablet. And the screen is uh, pretty durable as well. It's got a scratch resistant on it, so you're not going to scratch it up real easy just by, you know, touching it and putting your keys on it if you happen to do that or something gets on it. It's not going to scratch up too easy. So yeah, that is the hardware tour and the build quality of the Samsung Galaxy Tab A9. All right, guys, we're going to talk about the screen in this section. I'm going to go ahead and boot it up so you guys can see the little bit of an animation. And while it boots up, we'll talk about the screen a little bit. So you have the Samsung Galaxy Tab A, and it says powered by Android. And like I said, this is a TFT panel. It has 16 million colors. And... It gets very bright from my experience and has a nice wide range of brightness. Also, the pixel density is not the sharpest in the world. So if you're looking for very sharp, pin sharp text, this is not gonna be a tablet for you. So as you can see, the screen is very colorful and it has that Samsung Galaxy S6 look and feel, but we'll get into that more in the software section. But as you can see, you can see even here, the pixelation that's showing on the camera. But overall, viewing angles on the screen are very sharp. So as far as viewing angles, it can go off axis. And if we brighten it up some more right here, it can go off axis without, you know, the colors and everything going out of whack. So there's not really no washed out to this screen. 
But like I say, it's not pin sharp, but you can see you can still see it on the sharpest of angles. So that is a great thing right there. Going over to the top angle, you could see the screen's pretty good there. And it's very color accurate, you know. It's not very off in terms of the colors. It doesn't pop out at your face like the AMOLED screens on Galaxy smartphones, but it is very color accurate. Something like the iPads and Apple Camps. So yeah, this is the screen on the Samsung Galaxy Tab A9. All right guys, in this section, we're going to talk about the internals and the software on the device. So this is running a Snapdragon 400 processor at 1.2 gigahertz, that is a four core processor. And this model is the Wi-Fi model, so it has 1.5 gigabytes of RAM. If you go ahead and hit that LTE model or get that LTE model that is, that's gonna give you two gigabytes of RAM. But overall, 1.5 I think should be solid for what you're gonna get here. Let's go over into settings and see what software is running. We're gonna hop over into settings and we're gonna scroll down into about device and we're gonna see, let me pull the camera up closer or the tablet up closer. That is Android version 5.0.2. So it's not the latest right now and it hasn't been updated um, if you're watching this and you've had this tablet a while. Um, it's still on Android 5.0.2 for me. I don't know if the LTE models have been updated. Go ahead and leave a comment down below if you know anything about updates happening on this tablet. But as we can see, it's running Lollipop. But the thing about Samsung tablets is, although they do get upgrades to Lollipop and Marshmallow, because of the heavy skinning, and it's not really heavy anymore, but because they throw their layer on top, the Samsung UI, they don't really make huge changes from each iteration. So essentially what I mean by that is the tablet is going to feel almost identical whether you update it or not. So updates, I don't think on Samsung are the hugest thing in the world, probably just for performance issues, but Android Lollipop on this tablet has been performing pretty well from my experience. So yeah, that's pretty much what you're going to expect on the inside. But what about what comes on the tablet? So when you first fire this tablet up, you're going to see, I did install some apps here. But it's very minimal. It doesn't really include much boatware. It's like only two pages right out of the box. So that is pretty solid. I'm not sure if you buy it from a carrier. You're probably going to get some bloatware if you buy it from Verizon or something like that. But going over, you can see it's not really that much. But what is nice is that Samsung included only a few of their apps. Galaxy Tab Screensaver. So if you go in here and you start the screensaver, you're going to see that it shows off the tab. But this is probably more for some marketing, like if you have the tablet in store. But it's also pretty cool to just put on the table if you just want to look at the Samsung Galaxy Tab A. So it does offer a screensaver right there. It's modern and sensitive. We all know the, the whole deal, the shebang. Okay, going back to Galaxy install apps, we're going to see we have a smart manager. And basically what this is going to be is a task manager built in. So it can tell you your RAM usage. You can clean the RAM up, show how much battery is remaining, what has been deactivated. Going back into Galaxy installed apps, we have Galaxy apps, and if you're familiar with a Samsung Galaxy device, you'll know that Samsung throws in their own app store that improves on the Play Store by giving you extra apps. So it's always nice to have that extra, you know, app store if you're into the whole, put a whole bunch of apps on your device. It just gives you more options. Going over to Slide Sync, this is basically going to sync up multiple Samsung devices and Milk Music, which is Samsung's own streaming service something like Spotify, but Samsung, or Apple Music, but Samsung's version. So yeah, minimal bloatware on here. Also what's nice is they included the Microsoft suite, which is probably the most productive application suite you're gonna get on mobile. And what's cool about this is you don't have to have the 365 subscription on here. You can still use these on the tablet. You just have to have a Microsoft account. But if you wanna transfer them over to a PC and get the full functions on the PC, then you're gonna to have to have the subscription. But for the tablet, you can just go ahead and use these mobile apps. They're free as of right now, but it might change in the future. But this is all cool because, you know, you could start a blank document, for example, here. And if you get one of the accessories, that look, looks like we just had a crash there. So yeah, you can see this is not the most powerful tablet in the world, but um, we'll see. We can do a document here and it's, it's pretty nice that we can do that. And uh, like I say, if you get one of these tablet keyboard accessories that like plops down and then you could just have your little keyboard right here, that would be a nice addition to have those sweet apps. Also, you get Skype, you get OneDrive, so you get a few of those things pre-installed. And of course, being an Android tablet, we get all the Google apps. 
So this tablet is pretty loaded with um, a good amount of software, a healthy amount of software, but it's not all in your face, and that's what nice, what's nice about it. The look and feel of the software is a lot like the Samsung Galaxy S6. You get a lot of Samsung Galaxy S6 wallpapers. As you can see, you get all of those. The icon layout, just like Samsung's Galaxy S6. Going into settings, you're gonna see split pane view, so something a lot like the iPad is. This is a four by three aspect ratio screen, which basically means that the text is gonna be more wide and it makes it a lot better for browsing. And you can see a lot more on the screen rather than a 16 by nine, which is what you'll see on most Android tablets. Um, as far as features, do they include anything? They include a couple motions and gestures. So you can do swipe the screen to take a screenshot. You can mute the tablet by flipping it over. I got both of those features enabled. And also you can do multitasking and true multitasking. So if I open up, I might go into gallery. Let's go into a couple of apps here. We can go into calendar and as you can see, well, let's not do calendar, let's do memos. So memos here, and as you can see, if I go back to here, we can do this and this is gonna open up one down here and then we have multitasking down here. But if I swipe these out, you can see the apps are enabled. So if I can go into YouTube and you can see you get the split pane view. This is typical of most Samsung tablets, it comes with most of them. But if we turn it sideways, you can see we have some true multitasking going on here. So that's a nice addition to the Samsung software right there. And typically we always have the Google installed stuff. One more thing I wanna point out is that you don't get S Voice on this tablet. Seems like they removed that from this. And I don't think that's such a bad thing because S Voice wasn't really well perceived by most reviewers and most everybody. But overall, that's about what you're gonna expect on the software. All right guys, getting into this section, this is what I like to call the ADD or lack of attention deficit disorder speed test. So basically we're just gonna pop into apps and do things very quickly just to see if the tablet stutters up. As you can see, there's a little bit of a little stutter right there when we go into the briefing section where it's basically the Flipboard enabled news reader. So you can see there's a little bit of stutter there, which is pretty typical of most Samsung devices that I have seen. Going back, let's back out and let's go to this app section that I left specifically for this test. So let me close out everything just to make sure that we have a clean slate right here. Let me close out the screenshot and now we are clean. So go into calendar, let's come back out, let's go in the calculator, let's come back out, let's go into settings, let's come back out, let's go into clock, let's come back out, let's go into gallery, let's come back out, let's go into play music, let that load up real quick. And basically this test is just to show you how quick things load, just for like a real world everyday usage case scenario. So eBay, let's go into the Play Store, now the apps that are internet based are gonna be based on your internet connection. Mine's pretty fast, so you can see things are firing up pretty quickly. But that's pretty much what you're gonna expect on the performance. Now let's go back into multitasking and see if these things are staying open. So that one was remained open, the maps remained open. Let's go back into eBay. That was, had to reload. Let's go back into, let's see, play music. That had to reload. So you're gonna see some of them with the RAM management are gonna have to reload. But overall, it's pretty enjoyable multitasking experience. There's not too much hiccup here. And also you can see it has the close all button, which is always handy. So you don't have to go like on stack Android and go through each one of them. So yeah, you can hit close all. And that's pretty much what you can expect on your everyday app to app multitasking performance and you know real world usage if you're in and out, you know, just doing what you need to do. That's about what you're gonna expect on the speed. All right, guys, for this test, I'm gonna go ahead and do a Geekbench testing for all the people who wanna know real performance scores if you're into the whole score thing. I'm only gonna do a Geekbench, we're not gonna do any more. So as you can see, we got the Samsung TM550. We already went over the specs. So let's go ahead and run the benchmarks right here, and I'll be back when the benchmarks are done to show you the score. All right, guys, so the scores are in, and as you can see, we scored a 469 on the single core and a 1452 on the multi-core. So basically, let's see how that stacks up to the competition. The Galaxy S5 is a 938 on the single core. Samsung Galaxy S4 is a 658. So you're gonna expect something like the Samsung Galaxy S3's performance on here. But because this is a newer optimized processor, there's not gonna be as much hiccup as those older, less optimized processors. But don't take these too much into account because these scores are not really indicative of real world performance. Overall, the real world performance has been pretty solid for this, this year, even in 2016, when this tablet came out, it was great in 2015 as well. 1452 on the multi-core, and that's gonna give you 
right around LG Nexus 10 or LG Nexus 4, you know, speed as well as Samsung's Nexus 10 here speed. So it's similar to the Samsung Nexus 10's speed. So if you thought the Nexus 10 was pretty solid, this should get the job done as well for you. All right, guys, for this section, we're going to talk about the speakers, those speakers on the bottom and how loud they get. We're just going to do a quick test. So let's turn the volume all the way up. So you can see that's how it sounds when it's going up. And there is a little bloop sound on the speakers when you go like that. You could hear that little trickle sound or that little bubble sound. But let's go into check out another Everything Tech video. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. Annotation will be right up here. Um, links down below in the description as well. But let's go to Everything Tech's channel, which is the reviewer you're talking to right now. And let's watch one of the view videos right here. So let's see the let's see the unboxing of this device. I hope no let's one skip. My plans while I'm sleeping. So let's skip that ad real quick. Get a little bit of a video playback as well. As you can see with the 4 by 3 aspect ratio, on YouTube it cuts off the top and bottom. So you're going to expect this a lot with a 4 by 3 So overall the speakers, they don't get very loud, but they'll get the job done. As far as with the 3.5 millimeter headset jack, when you have the tablet on in plugged into a headphones, from my experience, those have been pretty solid as well. They get loud enough. They're not going to blow your socks away, and they're not highly optimized for audio files, but they will get the job done as well. All right, guys, kicking off this camera section, as you can see, if you power up the device, there is a camera quick access key right here, so you can open the camera from there. Um, going into the camera software itself, you can see it's very similar to what you have on the Galaxy S6. We have settings right here. So if we go into settings right here, you're going to see you could change the picture size on the rear to all of those different levels. You got 1920, you got 2952, uh, 2592 by 1458, and we have many more there, but you can read those if you want. Pause the video right now. Going back, you're going to see we have rear camera quality it only goes up to 720p. So that's kind of a bummer if you're really into taking pictures on your tablet, that's totally up to you. I'm not sure. Let me know if you're a picture taker on your tablet. VGA camera as well you can have. So VGA is pretty low quality. That's like five years old technology. Going into the view mode, you can view it in full screen or standard screen. You got grid lines, you got location tags, review pictures, volume functions, reset settings. We also have a timer right here. Let's see how much that goes up to. You go up to 10 seconds on that one. We have effects right here, which is going to give you grayscale, negative, and sepia. So basically, this is just very simple camera software. If you hit mode right here, you got a few modes in here. You have auto mode, panorama mode, continuous shot, beauty face, sound shot, and sports. So let's go ahead and take a picture with the camera. So we're in the camera. Let's get my Galaxy S4 over here since we're talking about Samsung. Let's go ahead and take a picture of that device right there. Let me get this in the camera. So let's go ahead and see what the speed is like on the Samsung Galaxy S4, or the Samsung Galaxy Tab A. Let's see if we hold it down. Let's see if we do our continuous shot, if we can hold it down. So you can see it can take continuous shots, very similar to what Apple does. Let's go ahead and see what the quality is like. So it does take a pretty nice picture overall. I'm going to give them props on this. The camera quality in here is pretty solid. Per usual, we would say with Samsung devices. I mean, the facts are Samsung puts great sensors in their, their tablets and cameras. So overall, you're going to have a pretty solid camera experience here. Let's see if it does the double tap to open. You're probably wondering that. Doesn't look like we have double tap to open the camera on here. So that's kind of not cool, but it is what it is. Let's go ahead and hit the video. Let's see how video goes. So you can see we have a little bit of a video playing here. You can also capture while taking a video and you could pause right here and resume the video. And then you just hit stop going into the video. We are indoors, so it's not going to be the best video quality. You have video player right here. Let's hit that. And uh, kind of off centered video, but. But you can see you can do video as well. What about that front facing camera? Let's go ahead and hit the front facing as you can see. 
Hello there. You can see it does have a front facing camera as well. And you can do video on the front as well. But overall, let's take a picture of the duct tape camera there and see how that front facing looks. So let's check out the duct tape camera. So as you can see, the quality on the front facing camera is pretty solid as well. Another Samsung product right there. Love this camera. WB350, you wanna check out that review? I have a full review of that. Leave that link right here up in the annotation. But yeah, that's pretty much the camera on the Samsung Galaxy Tab A9.7. All right, guys, let's get into gaming on this device. We're going to do dead trigger for this example and see how it performs. Now with the four by three aspect ratio, gaming is pretty nice because it widens out the game so you get a nice wide screen experience on a four by three screen. So gaming is really fun on this device. The screen not being the sharpest doesn't really matter due to the fact that when you're gaming, you get immersed in the gaming experience. So let's see how things perform overall. Let's aim and just shoot that right there. Let's come on out and kill some of these zombies real quick. Let's see what's coming. Oh, here comes one right here. Here he comes. Here he comes. Gotcha. All right, let's do some of the casual games. So I downloaded, you know, the typical Angry Birds. And Angry Birds does run on most devices really easily. But I just want to show you that this tablet can handle both casual and, you know, more graphic intensive games like Dead Trigger without a hiccup whatsoever. So we're just going to do a quick thing to show you how gaming is going to look. So the screen does have nice colors like we talked about the screen earlier. Angry Birds looks very fun and I don't think you're going to have too much of a problem with graphics and things like that because I know if you're buying this tablet you know what you're getting into in terms of the screen. So yeah, there's Angry Birds. <laughs> and that's gaming on the device. We'll handle most games casual and things like Dead Trigger and Modern Combat without a hitch. All right guys, for this section, let's get into battery life. So going into settings, and you can see throughout this video, we've only dropped about 8%, and this video has taken a lot longer than what you're seeing. This is the final cut, but this video is taking me about an hour to perform this. So as you can see, battery, we've already been on one hour, 40 minutes, and we have 81%. So you're looking at about nine hours on screen time here. So that's very solid, very similar to what you're gonna get on the iPad. An iPad goes maybe 10, 11. But nine hours is a lot of time for using a tablet. So that, that's going to be pretty solid right there. Also, there's some extra battery saving features, such as the power saving mode. So if you go ahead and hold this, we have power saving here. And I, I don't know where it is. I believe it is under. We also have ultra power saving mode on here as well. So it should be right here, ultra power saving mode as well. So if we go ahead and do that, you can go ahead and agree to the terms. If you turn that on, that's really going to save you power. It's going to dim the screen way down, and it's only going to allow for these few extra apps. But this can really extend your usage all the way up to 19 hours and 9 minutes. So that's a nice that Samsung has included ultra power saving mode. And yeah, battery life is very good on the Samsung Galaxy A 9.7. All right, guys, how has real world usage been for me? This is why I basically want to give my own opinions on my experience. The tablet is very light. So using this tablet has been a joy just due to the fact that you can hold it in one pan and it's one hand and it's featherweight. I mean, it weighs a feather, it weighs nothing. It's as thin as a pencil, pen, whatever you want to call it. We talked about that earlier. Also, the performance has been enjoyable. This tablet it reminds me of an iPad like no other. So if you're one of those people who want an iPad but you don't want to spend the iPad money, which is 500 plus usually, the iPad minis or older ones are a little bit cheaper, or you just want Samsung, this is going to be a very solid and smooth tablet. Performance does hiccup here and there, meaning you'll see some frame drops. Like this is not as smooth. You'll see a little bit of a flame, frame drop on this flyout animation. And some things, you'll notice a little tiny hiccup if you're some of those one of those people that notices every little glitch, like I do because I'm a tech reviewer. But for the everyday user, not going to be a problem at all. Battery life has been very enjoyable. We talked about that earlier. But overall, real world usage, we can fly in and out of apps like nothing on this tablet. And it just throws everything I handle at it. Basically, my usage is browsing the web, watching YouTube videos most of the time, listening to some music here and there, playing the casual game here and there, doing some email, maybe a little bit of word documenting or memoing, watching a Netflix video, and it'll handle all that with flying colors and with 
ease. So real world usage, I'm gonna give it a solid eight out of 10. All right, guys, wrapping this review up. So from my experience, who is this tablet for and should you buy one? Well, if you can deal with slightly less sharp screen and you want an iPad-like experience running Android, then this tablet is totally for you. And I mean the bigger iPad because this is the 9.7. They also have an 8-inch, which is going to be like the iPad mini. So, yes, like I say, I know... A lot of us Android fans don't want to be compared to Apple, but this tablet, let's face it, the facts are it's very Apple-like due to the fact that the 4x3 aspect ratio, and it's just very simple. This is a very simple and easy to use tablet. Do you want a long battery life tablet? This will do the trick. Do you want a very light tablet that you're going to throw in your backpack, go to the skate park and have fun? This is a great tablet for that. Do you want a tablet you're going to go on the train, go on the airplane, go on a long car ride? This is going to be the tablet for you. Do you not want to break the bank? Do you want to spend sub $250 or maybe slightly over that, not over $300? This will be a tablet for you. Are you one of those people that have, have to have the latest and greatest software? Then this tablet is not for you. Do you, want, do you don't like Samsung's software skins and all that? This tablet is probably not for you in that case as well. Do you want the fastest performing gaming machine? This is probably not for you. But for everybody who just wants an iPad-like experience but does not want to pay the heavy amount of money that an iPad costs, and they also just love Android, this is the tablet for you. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. There's not much more to say on who this tablet is for. I think I just put it to you, from my experience, the best way I can. But let me know your experience, your perspective on who this tablet is for in the comments section down below. And that pretty much wraps up this review. If you guys enjoyed it, please go ahead and support the channel by leaving me a thumbs up down below. Share this video with anybody you think or any, you know, source, social media site that can, you know, spread the word on the channel I'm trying to grow out here. And uh, I appreciate having you guys around for this full review. I know it was long, but that's why I go ahead and leave a timestamp because I know you don't all have the time to watch these entirely long reviews. And uh, yeah, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We churn out tech videos here every week, at least two to three times a week at the very minimum. So you can expect tech videos come here. They're very random. They come in in product reviews. They come in the form of tips and tricks. They come in the form of anything that comes to mind technology, hence why it's called Everything Tech. And uh, anyways, that's pretty much it. I will catch you all in the next video. Go ahead and watch the unboxing if you want. I'll leave that link up down here in the description, annotation up here. And uh, I'll catch you all in the next episode. Peace.